Hey everybody, it's good to see you all again. This segment is just to kind of let you guys know what is going on in this episode. So in this episode, there is a situation um, towards the end or anywhere in this episode, there is a blank. That means there's no sound coming in the episode. And you might think that is your fault. That is my fault. You can blame me, say it was my fault because that is editing problem and that's because of recording and the recording platform that I use. If that happens to be in the in the episode, if that's in it, um, what you need to do is to just disregard it. Don't worry about it. Consider it like an ad break. Consider it like a break. Consider it like we're taking a five minute break. Consider it like that. So no freaking out. No need to worry. Make sure you guys enjoy the episode. Enjoy what's in it. And y'all have a good one and enjoy this one. Really enjoy it and have fun. And please disregard the blanks in there because other than breaks. Hope you guys enjoy this episode and thank you guys for understanding and for your cooperation. Here we go. Yes. Two for two. Yes, two for two. Guys, I'm doing two for two now. Um, Hi, guys. I'm glad you all could make it tonight. I'm here with Monty Corbell. Um, Next Apollo is one of your little friends. Um, That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and this is Monty Corbell. I'm so happy you could make it. I'm so stoked that you could be here. I'm so excited to get to know more about you. And we get to have a little fun here. Um, thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course, of course. I'm here for supporting everybody. All right, let's dive into everything. Firstly, I think the fans should know a little bit about you. Would you mind giving a little rundown? So my name is Monty Corbell. I am from the Milwaukee area. I've been producing um, hip-hop, sort of EDM-inspired stuff since 2015. Um, just totally indie, putting stuff out on SoundCloud more recently, Spotify, Apple Music. And I have two self-released albums right now. My first being very hip-hop inspired and my most recent one I came out with, I think this year still, it feels like it's been out forever, um, is more dark pop inspired. And that's called Mount Moon, which is a project I'm super proud of, happy to put out there. Mm. Wow, congrats on your new album. I'm so excited. Yeah, appreciate that. And I'm doing, well, I was doing everything I can to promote it, but you can only do so much before you get worn out, you know? Yeah, I get you 100%. I mean, yeah. just you being here, it's like more exposure. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Marketing game is tricky. Yeah, it is. It is. Partnerships <laughs> are most important. Oh yeah, very very true. But overall, I'm so stoked. Um, so let's dive into everything. Um, since you are in fact a producer, I'm going to give you. Uh, I'm going to make this nicer for you since you are a producer. Um, let's start with a little backstory because everybody loves a backstory. Um, okay. What got you into wanting to be a producer and to even be interested in music at all? Um, well, when I was a kid, the first, I didn't even realize I was producing, but I was learning guitar maybe around the age of 10, 11 years old. And I had recorded myself playing guitar on Audacity, you know, just like the family Windows computer. And I realized that the song would sound better if it had drums. Now, I had no idea what the craft of producing was, but I decided to just take a drum sample that I, I think I clipped it from some song and I just kind of pasted it in there where I thought the drums would go. I haven't thought about that for years, but I realized that that was sort of my first run at producing. Now, I don't have that MP3 today. I'm sure it sounds like crap, but, <laughs> <laughs> but later in college... Um, I got this idea from the Arby's commercial. It's like uh, that. Bum, 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 bum. We have the meat. 
and I was like, oh, like I should make like a full version of that song. And like just from this idea where I had this joke that I wanted to come to life, I kind of taught myself how to produce enough to make the song. And then I was like, oh, I, I kind of like doing this. I might, I might do some more of this, you know? So that's how I got into it. Ah, okay, that makes that makes perfect sense. It, <laughs> it, it was a joke. Um, it was it was a joke in the beginning, but now, um, it's like a real thing going on. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm got my own artist name, and I'm pretty serious about it now. I mean, it just started as something like I was in college, and I put put on a song that I made sort of as a joke for my friends, and then. You know, as weeks went on, I put on something that was a little bit more serious and they kind of danced to it and eventually they learned the words. And I'm like, wow, I kind of, I kind of like doing this, you know? And that's yeah. just where I started, you know? Yeah, yeah, I totally get you. <laughs> it's actually really funny that it started from a little joke and now you got this whole thing going. <laughs> yeah, you just never know where, where hobbies or whatever you love will, where it will come from. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding, no cap. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, um, if you hadn't if you hadn't released that song, um, uh, the ultimate would would have been like I don't know, like something else. So I'm glad that you took a chance and got that song out. That's true. Yeah, and I and I do like try other things. You know, I'm. I tried writing books, I tried um, acting in independent films, but I think making music is the art form that I enjoy the most. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't even envision you doing any acting. I think music is your best. It's your best form. Yeah, yeah. It's easier because, you know, you get to isolate yourself and just, you know, be you <laughs> in the act of making music. Oh yes, yes, one percent. And I admire, um, I admire all that. So that's good. Um, my God. Going on, cause going on. Um, then I got a little backstory. Now let's jump really into your music. Um, so as a producer, how do you uh, describe your music as a producer? Um, I've always been intrigued by the darker side of things. In high school, I was just this huge fan of dubstep music, and I never learned how to produce dubstep, and I'm happy, I'm happy that I didn't go down that path, because I feel like, I feel like it's a little saturated at this point, and I'm not sure if I could have built the skills in time to match up to those expectations that are in the upstep edm community but at the same time like with my hip-hop music and now more recently my dark pop music there's still always that influence from dubstep that seeps in so when i'm making music i'm trying to emulate that uh, without actually doing it um, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so you're like an everything artist, then. Like, you don't have like a you don't have a Pacific sound. That's kind of what I'm going for. Yeah, it's uh, I th I think I have a fear of being limited to a genre, so I like to kind of sit in the middle of this triangle. I guess you can imagine where each corner is a different genre, with it being hip-hop at one corner, pop in another corner, and EDM at the third corner. And I try to sit somewhere in the middle. Every once in a while, I sway towards one quarter or the other, but I try to do a mix of it all just so I can, just so I don't limit myself to one genre, because I don't know, there's something about that that scares me. I used to have that fear at all. I mean, you, sh you should never limit yourself. I mean, everything artists, if you're doing multiple genres, that it that's not a fear that's like an accomplishment 
Yeah, in a way, it's like the opposite of being limited because now I have three genres of sound to select from. Uh, I do see that. I do see that. But at the same time, though, at the same time, it's not really limiting because now you get the freedom to choose whatever you want. Um, so I don't take it as limiting. I take it as more opportunities and more choices in a way. Yes. I mean, as long as I can still relate to the listener, that's that's the difficult part is if once I start leaning towards one sound, once people don't like we're going to find listeners that don't like dubstep, for example, a lot of people don't like dubstep. So when I lean into that sound instead of the pop sound, I start to alienate people. So that's why I really try to stick to the middle. It's it's kind of tough. Well, you're doing a good job of managing and at least going for it. At least going I appreciate for it. that. Yeah. That's really cool. It's really cool. But yeah, you have a very good point. Even I don't like dubstep. I like it sometimes, but... Yeah, it's, yeah. It's like a it's sometimes. It's alienating for sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Um, but yeah, you... Um, if it really is scaring you, then you should make your own sound. Then have you thought about making your like your own um, sound? I mean, in a way, that's what I've ultimate, ultimately been trying to do from the beginning. I'm I have influences like many artists do, like Justin Bieber, The Weeknd, for example. But there are none of my songs that sound like either of those artists. So. I mean, I guess from borrowing from all of these influences, it is sort of progressing me towards my own sound. I think I think that's something that Travis Scott did, for example, where he took kind of that grungy, almost metal rock sound and applied it to the trap hip hop scene. And it became his own sound. It was no longer just hip hop or no longer this this dark garage sound and i guess in my own way i'm trying to trying to find my own version of that without copying anyone of course oh uh, yeah yeah i totally get you I totally get you but hopefully though you can you can ultimately find what you're looking for and and hey i got tons of connection if you need any yeah yeah like producers and stuff well, yeah, I do have a full-on podcast, and I do have hundreds of friends. Yeah. I'm sure you got a huge network, yeah. I mean, I'm always looking for um, vocalists to feature, too. And my first album, I, ha I mean, more than half of the album is features, so that's something I'm totally down for if we ever want to link up with that. Yeah, of course. Just let me know in a heartbeat. I'll send you lots of recommendations. Cool. Yeah, I got you. I got you. But now I got that kind of. Now I got that kind of. I'm getting to know more about your sound and about you. That's really. Yeah, and I think it's not always easy for people when there isn't a direct correlation to compare someone to. You know, like. Uh... Like The weekend, for example, sounds kind of like Michael Jackson. So you can say, oh, he's the modern day Michael Jackson. And there you go. Now you can listen to The weekend. You have the whole scene set. But for me, I guess I don't really have that comparison. So it might be hard to convince someone, hey, oh, he's he's kind of like this modern day or this version of this. So I, th I think when I sit down and try to explain it is when it becomes a little bit easier to understand my sound and what I'm trying to accomplish. Before we can get to that, it's that's the groundwork, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I totally get you. Some people they they don't know their sounds, so every single yeah. every single thing, uh, every single song they make is just random. They just pick any like random genre, and they don't know. Like at least like you have a little idea of what you're doing. Some people don't, so at least you got that. Yeah, for sure. Self awareness is. Extremely important, in my opinion, when it comes to art. No kidding. No kidding. 100%. Um, let's dive in some more, because I'm starting to like this. I'm starting to like this. Um, okay. 
Now, as a producer, um, I'm sure you, I'm sure you could probably answer this, and no problem. But um, what is your method when it comes to producing? Um, what do you do when it comes to producing, and you know, um, getting your collaborations going? Like, what is your, uh, you know, what's your production method? Hmm. It it always differs. I kind of go through stages. So I'm like totally an album guy. I I hate releasing singles, and I think it's cool when people do, but like something about that that I just can't wrap my brain around. I I have to tackle like a big project of songs, and that's always the way it has been. And it goes through creative stages. So I start out. I mean, right now I'm going through this stage where ideas will just kind of come to me, whether it's a melody or just kind of uh, the way an instrument might sound and the way it's layered. Sometimes it, it comes to me as I'm trying to fall asleep. I'll wake up, grab my phone and mumble into my voice memo app and hopefully it makes sense in the morning. And that period takes place for about two or three months and eventually it starts to dry up. The ideas from the air don't come in anymore. And that's when I go through all of my notes, all of these weird mumble tracks that I made in the middle of the night or while I'm driving or at the gym or whatever. And I start to organize them and I start to say, okay, this is a song. This is a terrible idea, you know? And I, you know, I kind of go from there um, when it comes to actually being in the producer seat. A lot of it is just scrolling through different plugins, different instruments, messing around until something kind of clicks for what I'm looking for. A lot of times I can hear what I'm in my head, what I'm trying to go for, but sometimes I'm just completely lost and I allow for the discovery to take me away. So that's kind of the producing part of it where I'm just kind of going crazy. Then I'm throwing instruments in there. I'm throwing vocals in there. I have different versions of every song. And then the part w that comes next is a lot less fun. And that's the polishing and the making it sound like an actual song part. And and then I don't mix and master any of my own stuff. So once I finish that, I can finally rest. <laughs> so that's my process. Oh, interesting, interesting. And that's pretty interesting. I mean, um, I'm curious to know, like, why don't you believe in, like, doing singles? Every artist I know, like, most of the ones I know, they have singles leading up to an album. But why do you believe and doing big projects instead of doing little singles building up to it? I think it's... Uh, I've always just been an album guy. And when artists release singles, I'm usually not very interested. So for me to kind of go down the single path, it's hard for me to get motivated for something that I'm not motivated or from other artists. At the same time, it's hard for me to imagine myself, like I said earlier, marketing is this game that's it's so difficult, especially, you know, I, I think it's extremely difficult. Um, I, don't, I don't really have any excuses. Um, building this marketing campaign for three minutes and 30 seconds to say, look at this great accomplishment I did. It's it's one song and, you know, just blast it out, listen to it everywhere. And that and people do do that and that works and you are absolutely correct. But it's hard for me to imagine creating that momentum and excitement for just one song. And that's why I'm more attracted to making this huge project so I can say, look at all of this, you know. Hmm. <laughs> A superstition, I guess, at the same time. No, 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 no. It makes perfect sense. Um, I've seen it all over social media. People go all in now for just three, two minutes single. They go all out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, I mean, sometimes it works. And sometimes that's like the hit that ends up on everyone's TikTok, you know? So I can't slam people for it, but 
it's just it's not my approach Mm. Uh, okay. But I do see, I do see why you're doing it. I do see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But your way, um, but your way works. Um, it does work. At least people get to enjoy it all in one and you get to promote that one thing instead of promoting those little things. And that's like more of produ production. Uh, you do like, I guess you are sticking to like simple promotion when you release big projects. Yeah, and a part of it is, you know, if I were to show one song and it's from an album, it's only one piece of the vision. And it might not be as well as it might not be as well understood um, as one song uh, in comparison to it being a part of this big project where the album is the journey. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. I do see where that comes to play as well. So overall, yeah. overall, I do believe that your, your process with everybody else's day, eventually, overall, um, they work. Yeah, yeah. If it's what gets them excited, you know. Mm hmm yeah. And yours is, yours is just as powerful and just as good as the other one because you get to have that sort of promotion and you get to, at the same time, um make the album the best it can be and everybody gets right. to enjoy all the singles all those songs and it's yeah yeah that's pretty impressive i like it i'm all for it too i mean i i mean i don't record music but i'm i'm all for the concept that makes sense yeah for sure L Uh, all right, let's jump into more. Um, so what kind of softwares and platforms do you use when producing? Uh, <laughs> so I got friends in music that make fun of me for this, but I think it's a completely legitimate um, music producing software, FL Studio. And a lot of people use that. A lot of professionals use that. And I'll watch people on YouTube who say, oh, this is how I produced this song for J. Cole. And then he pulls up his FL Studio. So I think a lot of times in the music industry, that software isn't taken as seriously as, let's say, Pro Tools or Logic Pro. And I think if I were to one day take on mixing and mastering, maybe when I'm a little older, I will have to learn that software. But for now, I'm just super comfortable in using FL Studio. <laughs> And I make it work. Yeah, one hundred percent. And hey, that's not in the life. I, I, most of my friends, they, they use it. They're exactly. Like yeah. I, I mean, I have a friend who's. I think maybe he he doesn't think highly about it because he's he's more into rock music and he owns his own studio. Um, I haven't gone visited yet, but he owns his own studio in Milwaukee. Might not even be open because I don't know what it's called. But yeah, he, he just completely was like, FL Studio, come on, man. You got to learn Ableton or whatever. It's like, no, nah, look, I got two albums and they sound great. So maybe maybe next year. <laughs> nah, forget him, forget him. Just do what yeah, you yeah. can. For sure. Dude. And I think just there is like a little bit of a, a, a danger in that too because it's like, oh, okay, if my... software isn't as good maybe i should learn this other software but that's time spent not working on the music you know and it's like if you're comfortable in a specific software that's the software you should stick to because you're not wasting time trying to learn some other software and maybe not even being as good in it to produce a less a less product a lesser good product gosh i can't speak words <laughs> yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred. And I totally get that too. I mean, I've talked to a lot of producers, and they said they said similar things like that. Okay, cool. But yeah, anyway, um, my mind's slipping, so I've got to keep, got to keep pushing. Not a problem. You said this was your second podcast of the day. Yeah, this is my second one. I did one earlier. That one was oh, like yeah. that one was a washout. Okay, yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, I'm still pushing. Um, I do love producers because I love to have, you know, connections in case I do start recording music. I get to, at least I have um like support in the back. If you're looking for something experimental, a little dark, I'd be happy to work with you. I was thinking about doing that. I already have my first album in mind when I do start. I already have my yeah. first album in mind. I mean, the dark pop sound is something that's really starting to, I mean, with Billie Eilish, I almost said Ilyish. I always mispronounce her last name. Billie <laughs> Eilish and, <laughs> and The Weeknd, like they both, I brought up The Weeknd like three times now, but he's just so huge this year. It's crazy to see where his career has gone. But both of those are really taking on that dark pop sound and making it popular. So, I mean, it's kind of an exciting time to be be in that genre. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Yeah, I've. Oh, I do have an idea of a song that could go with dark pop. So, if I do, yeah. I, then I will hit you up. Yeah, make sure you make sure you just write everything down. I recommend the voice memo app. Just keep a record of all of your ideas, you know, because sometimes you forget about stuff. I look back at stuff all the time. I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of a good idea. Maybe I should try that. You know, that's what I recommend that you do. Yeah, of course, of course. And I keep that. I keep a whole list of ideas. I put awesome. names of uh, things I uh, imagine and I put them on paper and that's what I look at. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Oh, uh, yeah. It's because things happen in the future and if I don't remember them, they could they could be easily like thrown away. Oh, yeah. It's so easy to be distracted by life. Oh, uh, yeah. 100%. My God, slipping away. Um, now this is like a job interview kind of question, but I'm just curious. Like, what? Where do you see this producer thing going in five years or years like beyond? Well, I have attempted to produce for other artists, and uh, I. I I can do it. Like other artists have used my beats. At the same time, it's definitely not my strong point. I, I wish I it was something I could get good at. And at the same time, I feel like because I have trouble producing for other people, I feel like I'm not that good of a producer. Like I look at these producers on Instagram, for example, where they're producing two, three beats in a single day and they're just grinding and selling them for $200, $300 a pop. But me, when it comes to producing, I'm, uh, I take this weird approach, and I, I just I maybe start with a sound, and I build on it, and I layer it, and it's something that comes out really crazy. And it's like, okay, this artist that I was maybe trying to work for might not like where it's going. I've had some luck in the past, that's something I would hope to improve upon moving forward is like having some versatility when it comes to my producing because 90% of the stuff that's out there is stuff that I did for myself and it's stuff that's you know not really accessible to the mainstream ear uh, because I am so experimental I am I'm always trying to push myself to be innovative. And I think if I want to produce for other people, which I think eventually I should, because, you know, I think people can only listen to my voice so much. And that also expands uh, my my small network, but hopefully turn it into a, a bigger network of music artists. Um, and it makes it would make me more valuable as an asset or a music artist for someone else. Um, but currently, yeah, I mean, it goes through phases, like I said. So when I'm in the production phase, maybe what I can try, I mean, it's going to be probably December, January when I actually start producing producing again right now i'm just in the idea phase i might try to make some some spare beats to not sell but probably give away to people just to be more comfortable in producing 
for other people and hopefully open some doors there. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I totally get you. Some people just don't have the ability to do everybody. Yeah, I think I think what I touched on was the push to be innovative. And not everybody requires this reinvention of the wheel when it comes to making a song. And I think that's something that I should work on is being more relatable in my sounds, you know. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it. I totally get it. And you know, it's all right. It's all right. Um <laughs> the process. It's always a process, the creative journey, you know. Yeah, of course, of course. And that's good that you're taking um you're taking it one step at a time and um and you're taking it um your progress. You're taking it as progress, which I'm all for it. Artists that do that, that's clever. That's really good. Yeah, it's always good to challenge yourself. I think a lot of producers, they learn how to make one genre, house, for example. They say, holy crap, I got this formula. I can just keep doing this. It's so easy. You know, I'm making all of this money. But I feel like that's less fun. You know, I think it's always good to give yourself a challenge. Yeah, That's my yeah. Dream. Of course. And I also take uh, what you're doing as you know, as as genius. So mm. thank you. I like it. Uh, and I appreciate you uh taking your career as progress. Like um I definitely see it going places in the future. I think that's the way it always should be. I mean, on the off chance that, let's say, I built this huge fan base, I'm never going to say, oh, well, now I'm done. You know, because I love the art form so much to just say, oh, I've, I've accomplished what I needed to accomplish. That would be just so disappointing. I should always be chasing my fullest potential at what music can be. Yes, of course. I can really, I can really get you. I understand that coming from a producer side of things, I get you. Yeah, I get you. Um, and I appreciate you sharing it without them being personal. I mean, that's that's the game, you know. That's the art form. That's really cool. That's really cool. I'm glad you honored that form. Um, that's cool. Um. I don't do producers a lot, so I, you know, um, okay. I mean, I'm a songwriter too, you know, so if oh. you have questions for that, yeah. Oh, perfect. That's good. What's your songwriting method? I mean, it's, it's the same as, as producing. I mean, I don't, uh, I have a couple of methods. I mean, I'll come up with maybe bits and pieces of lyrics that I'll sing into my phone or I'll have in my notepads app. But I never, I feel like this is what Taylor Swift does, for example, where she would <laughs> sit down with a notebook and go from verse one to verse three, and she has the song. It, it always makes me very curious on how one can do that um, form of songwriting. And I'm sure you've had artists on here who are able to do that. But I'm more of a, I guess my method would be kind of like, um, like, uh, like making a log cabin. I got all these logs and I have to figure out how to put them together to make something work. That's my process. Uh, hey dude, no, no worries about that. No worries. Um, I totally long run myself. So to me, that's like, that's like good that we were late like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, writing is so tricky. You never you never really know where it comes from and and part of the issue with building confidence in writing is when you're doing it you feel like anybody can do what you're doing. That's not always true. You know, so I think finding that confidence to continue to write is is the trick. Yeah, yeah. 
It is. And I, and I feel that too. Sometimes very difficult. Um, but I just keep pressuring on. I just keep doing what, I, what I'm doing. Um, I add a little spice to me. Um, I add a little spice to what I do. So I just keep doing what I'm doing, no matter what people yeah. do. And if it comes up as, you know, copying someone else, I'm just going to rewrite it and just keep playing like that. Like, I just keep going with songwriting because it's something I love to do and nothing stops me. Yeah, yeah, you have that power and that spice that you said, that's something that's unique to you. And that's something where you can put all of your, not all of your confidence, but put a lot of your confidence into and to say, look, this is good because of this, my spice. Yes, yes, of course, yes. I mean, you get it. You get it. <laughs> I would relate like that. That's good. Yes. Um, but, um, so my brain's a little on the flip side. I'm actually going to do this then. Um, I just wanted to just get a little method of songwriting from you. This is what okay. I like to do with everybody, and I like to do a switch interview so you get to know a little bit about me. I know I don't talk about myself, but I feel like if we grow a little relationship, things will okay. go better. So this is a time for you to ask me anything or dare me anything you want. I'm open. Uh, I'm an open book. Okay. Uh, so when you're writing music or writing a song where does the melody fit in is it for you you want to kind of uh get sort of like that poetic rhythm and writing lyrics and maybe the melody will come after or do you have the melody in your head and you're trying to fit words into that melody oh that's a little hard or, because i don't record music i just do songwriting ah okay so the melody isn't really present in your head when you're writing then oh no it is uh, okay. uh, i'm gonna go in depth with that too um okay so oh my god um i'm gonna go with this every song that i do i always hum a melody to it so it helps me write for example um if it's a song about a breakup, for example, I'm going to have an angsty, kind of angry um, music to it. If it's like talking about, you know, a life lesson, I'm going to have a motivational tune to it. Yeah, yeah. That does make sense, yeah. Yeah. There are different so... keys to that some people are super crazy about. Like, um, like if you want to have something more mellow and cheerful you might go with c major for example it's something more guy would make more dark and moody and d flat minor yeah and i don't even know if there's any <laughs> science to that but that's just you know a lot of people believe in that yes <laughs> <laughs> yes mm-hmm. yeah and the melody it matters to me because if i write a song about you know, a life lesson, but it has like an angry tune to it that could be a little weird um, for me. So every single song has a has its correct melody to it. That makes sense. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the last thing you want to do is confuse the listener. I've listened to plenty of songs where I think, what what's the artist trying to accomplish here? You know, we got a lot going on. So I think that's good that you can kind of hone in on hone in on your vision and making it all work together. Yes, yes. Is you telling get me? I like that. You totally get me. Uh but that's just the way I look at look at you know songwriting. Yeah. But yet, yeah, uh come on, is there any more any, any more you want to throw at me? Hmm. What motivates you to write songs? Everything. And by everything, I mean, like, a lot of things inspire me to do songwriting. You know, like, for example, um, 
sometimes some shit happens outside my outside outside this door, and to me that could be a good life lesson for somebody. So I write about it. Or something shitty happens to me. Um, something horrible happens to me, and I gotta get that anger out. That's um. That's what. That's what. Um. That's also what. I. Uh. That's also a good one to look at. Um. And if something I like, for example, if I like to watch movies, I might write a song about movies. Um. That kind of thing. So. That's kind of thing I look at. Uh, so it's like a form of therapy or the desire to relate. That's cool. Yes. Yes, you totally get me. Totally get me. 100%. 100. All right, come on. Do you have any more you want to throw at me? Oh, hmm. Um, what is the hardest part about writing? Hardest part is the song structure. Um, oh, yeah, I agree. Structure. Yes. It's the song structure and then the idea of the song. Because you don't want to write a song about love and just title the song love. Like, you don't, like that's so cliche and stupid. Um, that kind of gets, and then the song structure. Sometimes I would like an intro, but then when I put an intro in, it's like, it feels weird now. The song feels weird now, so it's like, the song structure kind of pisses me off, so um, that that really kind of messes things up with the song structure. Because I know I know the generic ones like verse one, two, and three in the chorus. Those small things it kind of confuses me, and I don't know whether to add them or not. Definitely, and as a producer, that's something that I'm constantly struggling with especially since i mentioned earlier that i'm always trying to reinvent the wheel it's like i i don't want to do the verse one hook verse two bridge hook you know that is extremely tricky to be innovative and to make to make the flow of the song work i get that yeah i mean I'm, yeah exactly I mean, but I just keep pushing. I just keep pushing. So I'm glad that you relate to that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh yes. Um, you got any got any more? That's all I can think of. Mmm. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um thanks for the I you got to learn a little bit about me. I got to know a little bit about you. That's good. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to be the interviewer for a portion there. Oh, yeah, it's a surprise. I love yeah. to surprise everybody. I love surprises. Oh, jeez. Oh, come on. Don't you love surprises? Uh, sometimes. I like surprises in music. <laughs> well, just take it as a music surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is related. Yes. Um... And I hope today was really fun for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I didn't leave anything out um, that you wanted to tell everybody about. I hope I touched based on everything. I hope. Yeah, for sure. This was awesome to talk about the process. I think that's extremely important for people to try to understand in their own process. Yeah, if you get it, 100%. 100%. Just wanted to make sure that I got everything before something stupid happens. <laughs> No, no, I think this is a super good episode. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, and I do appreciate you taking your time out of your day to do this and for being so understanding. Um, do you have anything last thing for the fans out there before we cut this off? Um, I will say this to people who are currently making music. I think it's important for you to understand your motivations. I think it's easy to become discouraged. I think it's easy to compare yourself to other people. Don't do that. That's extremely dangerous. But I think it's important to assess your motivations. What, what are you trying to accomplish? And 
why and what does it look like your your final product or your artistic vision and what will it take to reach that point that's that's all i have to say there wow you touch me <sighs> you touch everybody I think I might. I think I might be coming down with um, with water coming down my. No, you're crying, <laughs> not me. Oh, I'm just kidding. God, <laughs> make sure whatever you do before you do anything shitty to make sure to check out Monty down below in the link for us. Where you, if you're not checking out this guy, then you're basically losers. You're complete. You're complete dummies if you're not doing. If you're not checking this guy out, keep on supporting Wrap It Out podcast. Wrap it out podcast. We are everywhere on social media, even TikTok. We just started um that. Um I'm Monty for being here. You've been such a fun uh, inspirational creative guy. I cannot wait for what the future holds for you. I wish nothing but the best of you. Thank you so much. And you too. Oh, so sweet. Um, that's a wrap up for tonight, folks. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and make sure to check. Make sure to support each other's music and creative styles. See you guys on the next one I do. And trust me, there'll be more. And just a reminder, season three is coming out in 2022. Um, so watch out for social media. Peace, y'all. That's a wrap-up for tonight. See you guys on the next one. This is the Wrap It Out Podcast performance. Wrap It Out Podcast. Available on Apple, Spotify, Google, Overcast, Castbox, Castro, Pocket Cast, wherever you listen to podcasts, it's available. This is Monty Corbell, Dreamlike. Dreamlike. 3000 in the air, and I feel dreamlike. On the other side, dream like tripping on you, tripping on. Dream like three more seconds and I'm mortified. I ain't satisfied when you try your second time. Oh, feel like I lost my life. Feel like I'm out of time. Feel like I am alive. Feel like I got to sit down, discuss this. Thing. I make no promise and you don't feel prominent All of this feels like Feel like I got to sing Feels like I'm rolling in It's wild like Harley Quinn Got full like charlatan I ain't getting involved with it But what's the bottom line? What's the bottom line with that? What's the bottom line with everything you say? It's None of my business so what the fuck am I asking for? What do I do that for? I shouldn't say much more I know I've been here before A tidal wave ooh, ooh, ooh. Thanks though Dream like you got a wish Dream like you are a witch Dream like my life's a glitch Dream like I reminisce Dream like you never left Dream like I'm better dead Dream like we never met Dream like it's anime Dream like a fantasy More like a drunk that doesn't walk straight More like the one that doesn't find fate I blew up like Pompeii I'm not born to dominate Can I reincarnate? Protecting like I am dreamlike It's more like Lucid paralysis It says I'll dreamlike Oh, oh, oh Oh, 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 Dream like I'm better dead Dream like we never met Dream like it's anime Dream like a fantasy Oh When will you tell me the things that I want to hear? It's not that clear to me Dream 
like I gotta find you like dream like oh 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 mm, 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 mm. and the beat keeps going and the beat keeps going like the song will never